I spent weeks driving around Japan, visiting secondhand stores, and looking for the cheapest Game Boy Advance I could find. After scouring a dozen different shops and regrettably passing on some good deals, I found a spot that was stocked with untested junk Game Boys. The shop clerk was kind enough to test them for me, and I managed to get a functional GBA for $37. And today, I'm going to turn this scratched old Game Boy into this. A few years ago in Japan, I bought this Game Boy Color for like $30. Since then, I've done a couple small modifications. Obviously, these are not the factory buttons. And I also put an IPS display in it, which was one of the greatest things I could have ever done. Now, I've loved having this Game Boy because I've been able to play Gen 1 and Gen 2 games, but I want to play Gen 3 games. Gen 3, Ruby and Sapphire are actually my favorite Pokemon games of all time. So this summer while I was in Japan, I searched secondhand stores across the country looking for a good deal on a Game Boy Advance, and I finally found one for the price of 5,000 600 yen, or about 37 US dollars. Now it's not in the best condition, it's not terrible, but it's not great. It's a little bit dirty, it's a little bit scratched, and this R button kind of sticks. But it powers on, and it reads cartridges. Sometimes. Honestly, that could be my cartridge. My Ruby version looks cleaner. There we go. I might need to clean up my leaf green. Why do I have a Dratini on this save file? No idea. So I'm pretty happy that I got a functional Game Boy Advance for $37. But today, I wanna upgrade it, clean it up, and modernize it. So here we go, let's get started. This is actually my first time taking apart a Game Boy Advance. I don't think these screws are oxidized at all. I think they're just dirty. So from the looks of it, there's no damage here. There's no corrosion on the battery terminals at all. I don't think this thing has had any serious damage. It's just a little bit dirty. So let's open it up. Yeah, I don't, I don't really see any signs of serious damage, just a little bit of dirt. What's going on up here where that R button was busted? Honestly, look at this. That R button is fully responsive now that we've taken the cover off. So maybe it was just like, maybe because there was dirt in there, maybe it was just a little bit over tightened possibly. Um, but the R, the R button is responding perfectly well. So next up, let's get the motherboard out. I'm also just gonna take out all these buttons here. Should just be able to pull that apart. Um, yeah, the buttons, ooh, the buttons and uh, membranes are a little bit dirty. We could just clean those if we wanted, but I'm actually gonna be completely replacing them. Oh, yeah, I can just, I can just feel the dust from inside here starting to build up on my fingers. Let's also disconnect the ribbon cable for the screen here. There you go. Take a look at this motherboard. Honestly, pretty clean. The contacts for the buttons are all looking very nice. It's actually a lot cleaner than I expected inside. The outside, you can see anything that was exposed, like the speaker here is pretty dirty, but we can clean that pretty easily. All that's left in here is the display, which actually I don't even need to take out. I can leave that in there for now because Eventually, I could use this as a donor or for parts. And since I have a new display that I'm gonna be putting in, I, I don't really need to take that out. So I'm gonna set these old parts aside and let's clean the important stuff. Ooh, let's start with this grimy speaker. Just a bit of isopropyl alcohol and... God, what is this? Is this like, it's like the little metal bits out of a woolly willy. It doesn't want to come out because the speaker magnet just keeps pulling it back. Yeah, look at that. There we go. The technique is literally just <laughs> grab it. Now, it's pretty clean already, but I'm gonna go ahead and just give the whole 
motherboard, a quick scrub, some isopropyl alcohol, especially around these areas that were kind of open, like the volume wheel here. Clean up the power switch. And right here around that R button was kind of the dirtiest part. Oops, I, I scrubbed off this number. What was that number for? Oh, it's gone now. Hope someone wrote it down. I mean, look, it, like I said, this was the first Game Boy Advance I've ever opened up, but this thing looks like it's in great condition. Motherboard's nice and clean. Next up, it's time to check out the mods. So here is the new display. Got a ribbon cable for both 32 and 40 pin models. Of course, the beautiful display itself. So the display I went with is the funny playing laminated 3.0 IPS. The screen lens is already attached to the screen, hence the name laminated, it's all together. And these funny playing IPS mods do require a custom shell. And I decided to go with the fully transparent. Does that not fit? Is this not an IPS ready shell? That, this should not be here. The reason that these laminated displays require a custom shell is so that you don't have to cut out this, this inner plastic frame here, because this should be able to just drop straight through, which obviously is not gonna be the case with this bit here. I may have ordered the wrong shell. Well, and it's a good thing I have a backup. So here is a green laminated ready shell. That's what it should look like. The screen will just drop straight in there. Beautiful, perfect fit. So now the question is, do I wanna go with the white bezel or the black bezel? And I'm kinda thinking for the green, we go with the black. My own mistakes aside, now that we have that sorted, let's, let's connect this and test it out. I don't think this is a necessary step, but I am just gonna tape off the 40 pin connector here that I'm not using. Better safe than sorry, right? Let's go ahead and fit this 32 pin cable. Of course, I wanna test the display before we go too far. to carefully put some batteries in. Oh, it works. It turns on. The screen looks great. We're good. We can move on. This screen mod that I'm using, the Funny Playing 3.0 IPS laminated something or other, it does have optional soldering. You can use these cables, these little wires, to solder and connect to some of the test points for the buttons to control some of the functions of the screen. They're completely optional. There is a touch sensor that you can use with the screen that will accomplish all of the same things. And for me personally, like I said, this is only my second time modding a Game Boy. Um, I don't have a soldering iron. I chose this one because I don't need to solder, but hey, if I stick around in the hobby any longer, that might be the next step, learn to solder. So I'm just gonna set these wires aside because I'm not using them. Where we are at currently is probably fitting this screen into the shell. Peel that off. Beautiful. Drop that right in there. Perfect fit. It's almost as if the shell and the screen were designed for each other. I'm gonna start connecting this back up, which I hope is the <laughs> correct step. So I need to fold this over gently, <laughs> gently, and connect the screen. Uh, this right here is the touch sensor for controlling the on-screen display. So I wanna tape that down and make sure it's just held properly right there in place. Back it up, I missed a step. I missed a step because it was in a different part of the box. Uh, there is a bracket here that goes in to hold everything in place. 
All right, so let's get that back in there. Probably want to get this screen connected first. There we go. All right, that's connected. Let's try to get the sensor down. Maybe I could cut off a little bit of that tape. All right, let's try this. A little less tape on the sensor. And taped. I think we're good. Before we move on, we have to put buttons in the face of the shell. And I've got a couple options here. I got pink, which was originally the color I was planning on doing with the green. I also have a light green, which I don't think they match very well. And then I have clear. We have some clear buttons to go with the green. Hmm. I might just, I, I'm gonna stick with the original pink. I think the pink's gonna look nice. D-pad, A, and B buttons. Let's not forget the light tube here for the power LED. Start and select. And then we've got the rubber pads. Should be everything for the face of it. Now we can kinda Okay, let's try to get the speaker to sit properly. Buttons all feel nice and responsive. And then just for a little extra security, throw some tape here to kind of hold that. Good idea, bad idea? I don't know. It's only my second time doing this. Let's start putting the rest of this back together. these uh, springs? Are these springs? Well, they're going in the L and R buttons. This shell included all new screws, so that's nice. Let's grab the two shorter ones for the inner motherboard here. <laughs> Probably should have screwed these in a while ago. Oops. All right, let's see if it all fits. I think so. Try not to lose those. All right, here we go. We've got it all together, but we're not done yet. This is the funny playing rechargeable USB type C battery mod. So what I wanna do is remove the battery contacts here couple steps here. One, I want to connect, stick this heat sink for the battery right here. Next step is to connect the battery itself to the circuit board. We want to drop all of that in to the battery compartment on the Game Boy. And then finally we have this custom battery door which has a cutout for the USB Type-C. Squeeze it all in together. Oh, there we go. Look at that, a USB-C port on the back of a Game Boy Advance. Now, I don't know if that battery ships charged, but we're about to find out. It does not. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna charge it, give me a second. I don't have a long enough cable to get this on camera, hold on. <laughs> there you go. Um, you can see that it is charging. It's got an indicator light when it's plugged in there. So it is charging. Now, is it charged enough to turn on? Oh, oh, beautiful. All right, so the touch sensor should be right about here. I think if you long press, yep, there you go. It'll bring up the menu, short press to change the current setting, hold, touch and hold to change. Oh, you can go to black and white, interesting, monochrome mode. Oh, or the old DMG look. That's nice. The screen should have memory built in to save your settings when you turn it back on. So let's put a freshly cleaned leaf green in there and see if this game will start up. Yes. No. Maybe not. Oh my God, I broke it. I over tightened the screw. Oh, geez. Well, RIP to that. We'll deal with that another time. We know Ruby works. It looks amazing. 
It looks incredible on this IPS display. Let's go take a look at my Dratini. I, I don't understand. I wonder if I traded this from Leaf Green because I just wanted to start the game with a Pokemon that was not normally obtainable. All right, I could, I could do this all day, but honestly, I, I'm so happy with this. This is really cool to add to my collection of uh, updated, modernized Game Boys. And you know, I th these are games that I grew up playing. And I feel like the reason that I'm so drawn to them now at this point is because one, obviously the nostalgia, but two, it just feels really good to have a handheld, something to play a game on that is completely offline, completely disconnected from the internet. Obviously I can play games on my phone if I want to, but being on my phone, it's so easy to get distracted, to get pulled away to some other app, a notification pops up, something, anything could just pull you away from the game and next thing you know, you spent the last hour scrolling through Twitter. So I think especially right now, I, I just really appreciate being able to have something that is so offline, some offline form of entertainment, where I can just go sit in a corner, sit on the couch, play the game, leave my phone on my desk somewhere else and just not be distracted. The screen is beautiful. I love the, the clear case, being able to see the internals, I feel like is such a 90s, early 2000s thing. Something I've always loved about these older consoles. Now, this Game Boy, well, the Game Boy that this used to be, is not the only thing that I bought while searching secondhand shops in Japan. I'll be uploading a video soon where you can see everything that I found at those secondhand shops. If it's up already, you can check it out right here. If it's not, check back soon. It should be. 